Next project is to disassemble the sill on this side and I'm just going to, since I didn't do a very good job of documenting how I got it apart last time, last year, I'm just going to take little pictures of what I've been doing and the first thing I did was remove this faceplate over here on the B post to see what was going on underneath. Now I remembered from the last time that these screws over here uh, are really hard. I tried drilling them out last time, broke a bunch of drills. Tried it again, uh, same thing happened. So I did the same thing I did last year. I ground down the heads with uh, a Dremel tool and uh, some grinding wheels to try to get the heads uh, to pop out. But I ended up sticking a chisel into here and just kind of wedging it up. And it pulls right. It, of course, I was able to get the other screws except for out, except for these ones on here, which I had to cut out. Uh, and then finally I was able to get this face plate out and uh, let's see if I can get a shot of it there. The screws are still in the end. I'll, I'll get them cleaned up and out of there. This is in pretty good shape. I should be able to reuse it. So then as we, once that's out, you can see the condition over here of the B post. It's just like the other one, uh, rotted at the bottom. It's going to have to be replaced. And if you look under here, you can see that what's under here is just the rocker panel. What was left of the inner sill and the inner sill plates are pretty much, um, not, you know, nothing worth keeping. So I'm going to just give you quick little shots here as you proceed in disassembling this side. So the next step is, um, I don't know if you can see this, but down here on this side of the car, the, the, this is not supposed to be welded over here. That's not supposed to be one continuous piece. It's supposed to be the fender goes on and off without having to weld it or unweld it from the rocker panel. So we're going to have to cut that forward enough. I don't know if I'm going to be able to save this. It's in better shape, it looks like, than the one on the other side. So I may be able to save that. Uh, I'll see after I get, get it off the car. So for now, the next step is I'm going to cut this loose and try to, try to get the bolts off the rear fender and get the rear fender off. Okay, so using this little handy Harbor Freight 3 inch cutoff tool, 3 inch grinding, uh, cutting disc, uh, made quick work of this cut through the front of the fender. I left it, of course, proud on the fender so that it, if I'm, a, I'm able to reuse this, this part over here, I can just trim it back over here to fit later on. Taking a closer look, you can see the condition I'm going to have to. Uh, deal with here as I proceed with the repair. This B post is just like the one on the other side, pretty much rotted away. Uh, you can see down at the bottom of it that the inner sill is just gone. It's supposed to come across the bottom here and it is not there. It's gone. The uh, side here uh, is in a little bit better shape. If you recall on my repair on the right side I had to make a little patch piece to go between here and here uh, and I may be able to avoid that this time around. I've got a little bit of a hole there on the side that will have to be filled in. But this, uh, the rest of the rear fender's area is in pretty good shape including that rear splash pipe which I've not removed. There's a little repair that I'll need to do at the bottom of it. Which I think I can fix that one rather than have to get a get a new one. You always want to try to repair the one you got if it's in repairable shape. Obviously this B post uh, MGA Guru uh, repaired his but uh, I think I had good luck with the other one from Scarborough Fair uh, last time around so I'm gonna go uh, this weekend and get another new left B post for uh, repairing this area here. Okay so I have succeeded in cutting out the middle part of what was left of the sill. In fact, this is it standing here. Here's the rocker panel, the sill ceiling plate, and if you look up inside you can see that there's uh, that's about what's left of the inner sill plate and there's practically nothing of the inner sill box section. Over here you can see the condition of the B-post as far as I'm concerned. Uh, here's, you can see here 
that's what's left of an old bracket that attached it comes welded to this same thing with one down there's one down here here it is so I'm just going to grind all that smooth this side of the car is in a little bit better shape than the than it was on the other side over here on the A post uh, it's in pretty good shape uh, it, I don't know if you remember I had to actually make a piece that went in here on the eight post on the other side looks like I've got a piece of the flange left over here so I don't have as much repair there however on the inside of the car over here uh, like the last one there's no um, oops I don't know if we get any late in here I'll have to show you that later there's uh, just a, a welded on piece of metal that somebody did for a bracket. Underneath here you can see a piece hanging off the frame. That's where somebody welded the connector between the frame which isn't supposed to be, be there to the rocker panel. So uh, I've been having difficulty getting uh, the bolts for the front fender loose. I've succeeded with one or two so I'm encouraged that enough soaking and enough patience and not buggering up the nut heads will get that fender off in the next day or two. Okay so this is what's left of the B post after uh, removing it from the car. I used a spot weld cutter and uh, it makes these nice little grooves right around the spot welds. So all you have to do is find the little indentations in the flanges stick the spot weld cutter down on it and don't go through too far and what you end up with is a little ring there that's at, this part is actually raised that's actually the raised part is actually what's left of the old flange and the metal behind it the original metal is still intact in fact I don't think I have any places where I came through now a couple of these spot welds are really close to the edge so what I do is I just drilled a little farther in and the circle's a little bit offset from the original spot. The spots are small so it doesn't take much to um, get through them. Found the spots over here on this original bracket that attaches this. It's gone of course. Uh, when you're left with a little piece on, on the, you know, you get most of it off, you chip it off with a chisel and then you can just cut these off with a Dremel tool. Flush. I haven't done that yet. But uh, that's removed and uh, we'll clean it up and start uh, patching. We've got to fill this hole over here and we've got to see how much of down here is is reusable. It, so far it's solid. It's got a little bit of rot in here. I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with that. I, I will probably try to patch it. And Like the other side I'll put in a new extra layer of metal in here because that's where the uh, convertible top bow attaches and as you might have noticed in my previous videos, I was worried about that, but uh, not with the double thickness of metal. It'll be really solid. And as you can see, I've got some rot down at the bottom of the B post. Just slightly better condition than on the right side, but not much better. So I'll have to do a similar repair there as I did on the other side. Here I've cleaned up the frame on this side ready for painting. And here's my A post. And the nice thing about the A post on this side was that I was able to save uh, all the flanges. So that's really good. That's, that one's in pretty good shape. Now moving farther forward, I have begun to, I've done a rough cut that's actually came out to be quite close along here for the inner sill plate. And I'm going to show you uh, uh, in the next video how well that fits, or how, hopefully how well it fits. And over here on the front, we had another rotted area like we did in the original on the right side. And if you recall, this was when I was a beginning welder. That was my uh, first weld. And uh, I did butt welds along there. And it was, uh, came out pretty well in the end, but it was uh, difficult. I had a lot of problems up at the top area here because it kind of caved in. This time I'm doing it a different approach. Same type of repair piece. I made a pattern to whoops, go in like this. And I've decided to do flanges that go underneath 
like this. This is just the top part of the pattern. I laid it over the top of the repair piece using the hole in that comes with it that has a bolt that goes through here as kind of a rough alignment and I've cut out this piece here uh, to go up in here. Now I had a lot of trouble on the right side with rotted steel over here. This steel is in better shape although down here it was rotted so I cut it out. I've done very much harder work at cleaning these areas that are going to have spot welds. Before, last time I did a butt weld, this time I'm doing spot welds into these flanges that I've made with a flanging tool which you can get from Harbor Freight. This metal is a little, little bit bigger, a little bit thicker than the metal that the flanging tool was designed for, so I turned up the pressure at about 100 instead of 90 and I kept pounding it until I got a decent flange. Um, and so this is going to go under there. I've uh, used a flanging tool which also is a puncher to punch the holes for the spot welds. And I'm going to uh, show you how this fits and then uh, weld it next. Okay, one other point is I've taken a piece of uh, pretty thick copper, about eighth inch, and I've jammed it under this seam here. And I'm going to fit the sheet metal between the steel and the copper so it would be backed up with copper. That was the area I had a lot of trouble with on the other side. This time it's much cleaner. Hopefully it's going to be tighter and I'm not going to have a problem with that. We'll see. Okay, here's that pot clamped and ready to start welding. Okay, so here is the completed repair piece welded in from here, down here, across here and over to here. Now there was uh, areas here where this, this piece had a flange underneath and because this metal is a little bit thicker than what my flanger is supposed to be set for this surface did not come up flush with the original surface so what I did was after doing all my spot welds all along here and over in here I went back turned the welder settings down to a lower heat setting and did a seam weld across where the edge is, kind of like where this edge is originally, except this is supposed to be flat. So I welded it in along the seam there, uh, and then I used a little Permatex uh, metal filler to, uh, f after I ground everything down, and I had just a little bit of, um, uh, and the occasional uh, not perfect weld or a little void, I filled that in with uh, Permatex uh, metal filler. It's a little bit like a I guess it's a little bit like a body filler, but it dries very quickly. And uh, sanded it down a little bit. Now I've got what looks like a pretty decent repair. And of course, it is extremely strong, as you can see here. I'm pulling it on here. So that's no problem. That is strong. So that's, that's that. It came out at least as good as the other side. So now we'll go on to the rest of the sill.